You know, I noticed that everyone is looking for that layup, that layup lead or that lay down lead. And when I say layup, I'm talking about like an easy score. Or when I say a lay down lead, I'm talking about someone that really, really needs your service. And for whatever reason, they're just stuck on you. They don't care about anyone else, but they're just stuck on you and they're anxious to get it done. You ever have one of those? Like a prospect that just keeps hitting you up like they're eager beavers. I'm talking about eager beavers, bro. Like, they can't wait to get it done. Like, they're calling you every day with an update. And you just got to say, no, nah, man, the status is the same as this morning. Like, you just called two hours ago, boo-boo. It's the same. It hasn't moved. There's people in line. There's <laughs> people in line in front of you, man. And, uh, you know, I think that it's natural because us in sales, we, you know, we go through this grind and this resistance where we kind of train our minds to believe that sales is hard, <laughs> right? Because we have this this uh, kind of the stigma about about closing a sale to actually be closing like it's a tough thing to do when in reality it's it's actually not right and and I think that is probably a good fifty one percent of the reason as to why we can't necessarily hit the unit count or the production count or the amount of sales that we hope to or aspire to or commit to um, at the beginning of each month and so. I know that this may affect you. Like, you know, you you just want them leads, right? Like, you ever catch yourself sitting there like, man, give me them Glenn Gary leads. <laughs> or you might hear a veteran say that depending on how old you are. You may not know the movie. But, you know, I was I was thinking about that today in the gym. And, um, and I, man, I got the answer for you. So you want to know, you want to know how to get the absolute easiest to convert lead? Do you want to know how to get a lead that will close literally 75% times or 75 percent time look at that 75 times i want to say 100 times like like literally like it's the easy absolute easily the the only reason why it's not gonna go is because that person doesn't qualify like literally they don't qualify and that's probably the reason that they don't end up turning into a sale but this lead source is the absolute easiest to close this is easier than a layup easier than a lay down do you want to know how to get those well watch this video What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel, and I'm your host. And in this episode, we're going to do something special for the salespeople. If you rely on sales for your income, all right, you, the, depending on how many sales and, and, and how many uh, units you close, per se, or how many uh, uh, sales you make for the month is directly tied to how much income you make per month. Well, this video is for you, so definitely watch the whole thing and let me know what your takeaway is. Let me know if you catch the message or which golden nuggets sprinkled throughout this video that you enjoy most by time stamping below and comment. Let me know what, what, you know, what your input is. I appreciate your comments. I reply directly. I don't have someone, you know what I mean, in Cambodia <laughs> or the Philippines replying for me. Those are, that's me. Um, you know, and I engage with the audience because I really like to know what you guys think. And when you time stamp the content, it, it lets me know what, to produce more of and so you don't necessarily say hey man put a video out like there's just time stamping and I'll and I'll get creative AF for you but anyway in this video I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you all my salespeople you know um, how to find the easiest to convert lead I'm talking about easy like easy bro <laughs> you have no idea until well you probably do because you may have gotten one of these leads on accident more than likely and didn't even realize how easy it was but in this video I'm gonna share with you how to get more of those and imagine that imagine if you could you know what I mean just like kind of filter through all the leads you get through each day and uh, and just solely focus on this one lead source that converts like crazy bro like crazy and, and the best part about it is this lead source leads to more of those exact same lead sources and so in other words this video is about to give you a pay raise boo boo so sit back enjoy the ride and let's go anyway before i go to the topic let me explain why this is effective i'm going to share with you a story of my past that literally goes hand in hand with how you actually get this type of lead source so as for those of you who don't know i grew up in la county and um and at the young age probably about 14 15 I had a group of friends, like really close-knit friends. One of them's name was Billy. 
And Billy was uh, was one of those kids that just looked old. You know what I mean? <laughs> like he just looked older. Like he was the same age as us, but this, he looked like a fucking grown man. Like this dude had a five o'clock shadow at the age of thirteen and shit. And anyway, he was just a big dude, and he was kind of like the bodyguard of the group. No one fucked with Billy, right? Like Billy was the adult and shit. Put it this way. Like, back then, we used to smoke cigarettes. Cigarettes is bad for you. You know, if you smoke cigarettes, I get it. It's hard to quit. But fucking don't do it, man. This shit's hard. And it stinks. I'm like, shit. So, anyway, this, this, Billy, same age as us, right? Age of 14, 15. Used to be able to walk into, you know, uh, uh, like a 7-Eleven or any type of liquor store, buy cigarettes, and not even be carded. That was the hardest shit to do. Like, you had to find, you know, the bodegas. <laughs> you had to find, like, the um, the real ghetto spots to just sell you some cigarettes at the age of 14. But nah, not Billy, man. Billy walked in. This dude could buy beer. You know what I mean? Like, he, was, he just looked that old. And if it weren't for the backpack and, like, the street clothes, like, they probably think that he was older. Anyway... So Billy had this uh, this uncle that he lived with. He lived with his uncle and his grandma. We're always at Billy's house, and his uncle had the CRX. It was a Honda CRX. If you don't know what that is, it's basically this real small uh, uh, two door CRX, it was like a rocket, man. This thing was fast, and uh, <clears throat> and and uh, his uncle used to work the, during the day, and so he would you know he would come he would come home like late at night, and then go you know go, uh, I'm sorry, yeah come home late at night and then go go to sleep just to just to kind of wake up like he would go to sleep in, in towards the morning just to wake up towards the afternoon and then go to work right and so um and so when he would go to sleep we would sneak out his uncle's car his uncle crx and man we would dip in bro like we were <laughs> like at the age of 14 15 we were we were cities away man like we were we were you know we, he lived in bellflower if you guys are familiar with uh, southern california and we were, man, we were in Carson, we were in LA, we were even going down to like San Pedro, and we would just, we would just hang out. We fit as many people as we can in this two-seater car, and we would always sneak it out. We were nervous as fuck too, because man, Uncle's Billy, you think Billy was big, man? Uncle Billy's uncle was big, er, and uh, you know, in Filipino culture, like they, they hit, man. They don't fuck around. They don't say, hey, man, you're in trouble. They'll fuck you up, you know. Like besides the grandmas and the females, you know, throwing slippers at you. Like, the uncles and the dudes will throw their fists at you, bro. Like, no open hand shit with, with you know, Filipino pops or, or uncles. That, that straight closed fist you. And, uh, you know, that was just the, their tradition, how they grew up. Anyway, we used to always sneak out this car and, you know, always get kind of get nervous about it. And uh, one time, we actually got caught. And here's why. is because um, when, when we were going out, you know, we would uh, smoke cigarettes in his car and his uncle did smoke cigarettes. So we smoke cigarettes, we'd, we'd have to roll down the windows and shit just so it doesn't smell. And one time, one of the pack of cigarettes fell out of his pocket and was sitting inside the, uh, inside the driver's seat. And so, you know, he, he, uh, he, he, we ended up bringing the car back, sneaking it back. Like, this is what we had to do because he had a muffler on it. We had to literally put the car in neutral about a block away from the house, right? Like, we would, like the way it was, it was a stick shift. And so he would put it in neutral and kind of just coast towards the house because if he rolled up on the house, you know, in, in second gear or whatever, like the, it would be too loud. And so he would kill the engine and, and kind of just roll just in neutral <laughs> to the house. So it was silent, right? Like we had it planned out, mapped out. Anyway, we snug it back next morning or the next day. Um, uncle wakes him up. Like we, we all slept over, like there'd be five in Billy's room and all of us just sleep over and sleep on the, you know, the floor or whatever. And, uh, and uncle woke his ass up like the fuck, you know, yelled at his ass and brought him into his other room. You know, and uh, uh, ended up punishing him. But what he was, what he, the the crazy thing about it is, is that his uncle said, "Man, this is the craziest shit, right?" His uncle said, "I don't know why you needed to sneak this shit out or my car out. All you had to do was ask. I would have given it to you." We were fucking blown away, because <laughs> as kids, you don't expect it. Like you think that you know what I mean. Like you think those type of questions or those type of scenarios that um that you're just gonna get a no so you assume that you're gonna get a no right same thing in sales right like we have kind of this stigma again in our head to, to believe that it's gonna be a grind or a sales gonna be hard to get when all along while we went through all this fucking bullshit just to try and sneak out his car he was basically saying like hey man all you had to do was ask his uncle was cool as fuck <laughs> You gotta understand, man, these people grew up in, in you know what I mean, like his uncle and, and, cause our culture is Filipino. They grew up in the Philippines, bro. There ain't no rules in the Philippines. I, I don't even think they're fucking stop signs in the Philippines, bro. It's just, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you better keep your eyes open. And uh, anyway, like, so he's a little bit old school and he's like, bro, all you gotta do is ask. 
And so anyway, some time passed and you know, cause he got in trouble, we couldn't hang out anymore. And so like, I would say like maybe a couple weeks went by and next thing you know, we're starting a car in the fucking driveway, like muffler and all, I mean, exhaust and all. Like we, we were tripping out because we used to have to sneak this shit out. Anyway, like all he had to do was ask this entire time. So we went through like leaps and bounds, got in trouble for fucking no reason when all we had to do was ask. And so the point of my story is and how it directly relates to sales and referrals is the things we want most, sometimes all we gotta do is ask. Does that make sense? Like, like we, for whatever reason, we don't ask because we're embarrassed, we're shy, we're scared. And, and, and a lot of times that's probably why the sale never even happens is because we, the way we ask, like we offer, right? We don't, we don't necessarily, you know what I mean, go in for the clothes and, and ask for the compliance. And so the lead source, because I'm gonna reward you. You know, you've been with me for about 10 minutes. I appreciate you listening to the story and allowing me going down memory lane. But I want you to pick apart the nuggets from that story and, and, and maybe, you know, relate to it and be like, oh man, I remember that. I used to I used to fucking go the long route, you know, in order to avoid something and went through all the trouble, went through all the hassle just to figure out like, man, all I needed to do was this. <laughs> Anyways, it's a learning, it's a learning curve for some of us. And so the point of my story and the, and the point or the, the lead type that I'm talking about is referrals. Man, if you are not closing at least a couple referrals per month, you are missing out. And, uh, and me personally, like I, I would say about a good 60 to 70% of my production every single month is made up of past clients, my own personal past clients and referrals. And here's the thing about referrals. Referrals, you get paid more, don't you? Like you get, a, you get a higher cut because your company didn't need to spend their marketing dollars to get. You get, you probably get a, a, a higher rip because you know it's not, it wasn't in their database, and so now your company rewards you for adding that client into their portfolio. And the best part about it is that these leads convert like crazy, boo boo. Like, have you ever been referred to somebody? Like, oh man, yo, I got the plug, <laughs> I got the hook up hit my man up or hit my girl up, she'll hook you up, right? Like it could be at a store or whatever. It could be a contractor, it could be a, um, another salesman, it could be whatever, right? A consultant, maybe someone that fixed your house. And I want you to think about it because the likelihood of you going with a referred person versus a standard company, right? A well-branded company. Um, if you were referred to somebody, the likelihood of you actually going through the referral is more likely because the people go with people that they trust, right? And they'll if if you know someone they trust already, and that person they trust already has used your services, and they they like it, right? They're gonna comply with that inner circle because the the challenging thing from a consumer standpoint is finding a company that's not gonna burn them, finding a company that that is going to deliver on the good service. And so if I had a good friend of mine or a family member of mine validate the service and say, man, you gotta go with them. Like I'm gonna listen to them versus listen to a commercial. And so referrals are very easy to get. And the, the, the funny thing is we just don't ask. A lot of salespeople, we just don't ask for the referral. So I'm gonna give you three, uh, three ways on how to find this lead source. Or better yet, three things you need to pay attention to when asking for this lead source. Because the, sometimes the toughest thing to do is ask, and the reason why is because we don't know how to ask. And so number uh, number one, probably the absolute most important thing you need to consider is timing. Timing of when you ask for a referral. So you might be asking for a referral, but 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 when? You know, do you ask like at the very end when the service is done? Do you ask too early? right? Sometimes the timing is, is really what's going to determine whether or not you're going to get a referral. And so here's the thing that, that I personally do and it's worked for me. Number one is I understand emotions, right? And so like a lot of the content here shares with you how to, how to do uh, kind of um, uh, emotional intelligent selling. I like to call it, right? I don't know, right? It's, eco it's called emotional intelligence. It's reading the emotions of your prospect, learning how to go in and when to go in based on their emotion. And so in other words, if they're feeling aggressive, I'm not gonna go in for something that's positive, right? I'm, gonna, I'm going to adapt to that aggressive tone, try to shift it and turn it into a more positive tone. So I'm gonna hear it, I'm gonna comply, I'm gonna let them know I hear them and then slowly maneuver it back to a compliance tone. I'm not, I'm not gonna meet someone who's like, hey, blah, 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 like, right? like they're aggressive. I'm not gonna be like, well, uh, you know, does that make sense? It does, it, it's like oil and water, it doesn't mix. And so the, perp the reason why timing is important is because 
sometimes we do it too late or sometimes we do it too soon. And it's a very delicate question, right? And I think that's why a lot of people don't ask is because they're worried that, you know, they either the prospect's going to have a bad experience, so they don't want to refer you, or the prospect just, you know, doesn't want to share their personal information maybe. And so what I do is I read the emotion. And what I do is I wait for a climax moment. A climax moment is when you're dealing with your prospect. In my field, we deal with them for at least 30, 45 days, sometimes even longer. And during that time, I'm looking for that climax moment. The climax moment is when I deliver them news that they love. Like you could tell they love it. Like, oh, that's awesome. That's great. They may even reply back that way on a text or email, like exclamation point, like awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Like they're very grateful. And that's when they're at their height, their emotional height. And right then and there is when I go in because the, the likelihood of reciprocity from that individual or the, the, the kind of the desire for them to return the favor, right? Like if, if they're in a, in a state of like, oh my God, Daniel, thank you so much. And then I ask them for something, the likelihood of them giving it to me is massive. It's huge, right? And so what do I do? Like I, I wait for delivering that service to get them at that climax moment. And then I say, hey, you know what? I, uh, I forgot to mention, I'm going to go ahead and send you this form. And uh, if you can, please fill it out. You know, it really helps me. Uh, it helps me expand my, my network and also helps me uh, uh, build my book of return clients. You know, I'm going to work with you for forever, ideally. And I'd like to, to have your help and your assistance to fill out this form. So I'm going to go and send it over. All right, so it's kind of it's kind of it's elusive. I'm not asking for for a uh, referral, but of course they're like, yeah, yeah, go ahead and send it over. Okay, cool. I just sent it over. It's inside your email. Please reply back and let me know you got it. And if you can, please turn that in uh, or send it to me so I can include it in the file and I can show it to my manager. Right? It's like it's, it's kind of like this uh, this gold star type treatment. And ultimately, that form, what it is, is basically just the field that asks for three referrals. It's, <laughs> that's it, right? Like um, you know, please list three people. Uh, that that could uh, benefit off of the service that I've given to you, and then I'd even add like a disclosure and just put disclosure. Your your personal information is kept confidential. You know, I never share any of the numbers. I never share any of the information that that you share with me with anybody. So no one's gonna know your business to that effect. And it has just a field for three people: their name, their phone number, and their relation. That's it. And what happens is they're more than likely to fill it out and give you three, even if they just give you one. Sometimes people just fill it out and give one. I'm okay with that. Sometimes people give you three though. Oh man, I had this one lady one time do the three and then the back of the page did like nine more. It was her entire fucking staff, right? And the best part about it, and they're nurses. The best part about it is uh, they each trickled and filled out more. So this is how you expand your network, but you gotta wait for the right time. You gotta be able to deliver and, and move in for, or, you know the right time um, and that 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 in its essence what that climax moment is going to be very effective if you understand how to use it in other things like going in for the clothes or going in for the application or what have you and then I'm gonna rush the other two because I gotta wake up my son we gonna, we gonna work out this morning um, so second is uh, how how you ask for the referral you know are you asking for it through an automated email like your company says hey uh, like a social survey email like hey can you leave me a review Right. Um, is that how you ask for a referral? Like they 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 kind of type in good comments. They give you score rating like five, five, five or whatever. Um, is that how you ask for a referral? And if you if you are and you're relying on that, then that might be your mix up. You know how you should like if you have that service where where you're you should, number one, be asking for your prospects uh, recommendations online, like like social survey, LinkedIn, Facebook page where they give a, a comment, like they write a quick blurb about their experience with you and they, and they rate you. Because what happens is it becomes your bridge to ask for a referral. <clears throat> so in other words, if they gave you a recommendation, you know, you want to give them a call back and say, oh man, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. You know, th this really does help me. As a matter of fact, um, you know, I've been meaning to, to, to give you a call and, and, and let you know that, that I got some referral business from that recommendation. So I, I, I greatly appreciate it. You know, if you know somebody also that could use this service in Orange County or in your county or in your neighborhood, you know, I, what I'd love to do is just help them make sure that they're on the best term that they could possibly get. In the absolute very least, I could send them a report that's going to tell them what their property value is and what the school rating is in their district. 
you know so if anything you know just if even if they don't want the service just have them contact me so i can give them that report super helpful and it's helped a ton of my clients past clients and and uh and referrals so you know you got to pay attention to how you're asking for it be creative right you don't want to just ask through a quick text like hey do you know anybody <laughs> right, hey can you refer me somebody um, and you know, besides timing and how it's also your tone, like the, the way you deliver the, the request of, of asking for referral, some people will, will move in with the right timing, right? They'll have the perfect, uh, approach, uh, the, the, the how is, is, is locked down. But when they ask for it, it sounds like a question. Like when you, when you speak, you're going to notice your tone goes up. Like, do you know anyone? <laughs> right it goes up right but when you speak it with confidence like a statement you're actually speaking down and so in other words you would say uh you know the reason why a majority of my clients continue to work with me for over the years like i have a lot of the same clients that's worked with me for years now they refer all their friends and family to me because i deliver genuine information like i'm not i'm not a marketing ad i don't tell you the best case scenario i can only put in front of you information that's worth your time and so because of my uh because of my clarity or my um, man, my mind just went blank because I'm <laughs> because of my uh, man. What's that word? The, it's clarity, right? Because I'm uh, transparency. Yes. So because of my tran because of the transparency in working with me, you know everything is black and white. So I can only put information that is actually applicable. I'm not a walking advertisement. So this has earned me um, a lot of referrals to uh, family members and and um, and friends within the neighborhood. But more importantly, my clients continue to come back to me, and I want to be able to earn that relationship with you. So you're gonna notice that it's a statement, and I'm talking down. Like I'm, I'm it's not the the tone is not going up like a question. Because that is, and that in itself can be applied to anything. It can be applied to how you start your application. It can be applied to how you ask for the sale. You know what I mean? Like, just think about that. Like, when you are going in for an important answer that you need for something, it doesn't even need to be in sales. It could be from your spouse, your manager, you know, your coworker, your subordinates, right? It could be anything. Just understand how when you ask, you're gonna notice that your tone goes up. Like, like, uh, is it okay if I do it? <laughs> <laughs> right like is it okay if i go here right like there's a there's a it goes up so so when you learn how to master your tone and you say it more like a statement it's easier to accept because there's confidence behind it it's it's as if the recipient of the message assumes it's the norm right like oh okay well that's just this is just how it is and so what happens is people naturally and i'm gonna go deep on you people naturally want to do the norm they want to blend in they want to do what everyone else is doing does that make sense um and so if they believe that that's the norm then they're going to believe that they have to do it too make sense and so you get to revisit it later and say hey you know what i if you remember i mentioned to you earlier a lot of my past clients return to me so i look forward to working with you in, again in the future but more importantly they they help their friends and their neighbors and their co-workers also get the same uh transparency the same great service that i've delivered to you so what i'm going to do is i'm going to send you over this form real quick if you can just please fill it out and if you and, and uh try and have it to me by end of day tomorrow i want to submit it in my file and show my manager uh it, it definitely helps me out you know, and you're going to want to wait for that climax moment, right? Where they're like, oh, thank you. Because you need to be, they need to be in the position where they feel like they need to do something for you. And you're going to know because you're going to listen to their tone. If you get these three steps down, your world is going to change. Like you are just going to pick up a couple extra units that are just super laydowns. And the best part about it is you get to branch off. Like you ever see that movie, Pay It Forward? Like, like three turns into nine and then nine turns into 27, right? And so it's just, it's this trickled network. So you Utilize that because the technology in today's environment enables you to do that. You just got to be creative. And I hope this helps. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.